Today on The Dead Life, I have your favorite astrologer, Tom McMullen, here to talk us through the summer's ups and downs. Where's the turmoil coming from? And is love in the air? If you want to leave me a message that might be shared on a future episode of The Dead Life in my Love Me, Love Me Not segment, leave it at 802-DEAD-811. That's 802-332-3811. You can follow me on Instagram at Medium Allison, on my Facebook fan page, and you can binge on my YouTube videos to watch readings, including episodes of The Dead Life. If you have abilities of your own and are looking to expand them and connect with other gifted people, go to deaduniversity.com. Well, Tom, welcome. Thank you, Allison. It's great to be here. Oh, my gosh. It's always great to have you here. I mean, obviously, we're friends, too. So (laughs) we have a lot to talk about today. So I thought it was funny. You were talking to me about some aspects, and I had some questions about things that I saw on social media online and uh, what is the devil's comet? Is the devil making a pass at us? <laughs> <laughs> a, a devil comet is is looked at in astronomy um, as it's you know fairly important comet. Apparently, I'm not an astronomer. Obviously, I'm an astrologer. Very different. But what I was reading about it, it's called the devil's comet because it's a big ball of fire about I you know I don't know the size of Atlanta or something. It's like a city size and it's uh it, it goes into like a c form like a pac-man uh-huh. and so when it's going across the sky it looks like it has horns mm-hmm. with this trail of fire you know cool. so and and it uh only passes visually to us on its way to around the sun every 79 years so why is that like why does it pass every 79 it, years well it just you'd have to ask joe that <laughs> <laughs> but it's so, so it, astrologically it doesn't mean anything. No, no it doesn't. So it's astronomically. Astronomically. But what's interesting is that it can only be studied every generation because 79 years is a generation. Is that, so the people uh, is that, that a generation? Well, because <laughs> the people like that saw it in the right. 50s yeah. w- can't see it now because most right. you know the scientists aren't here. Right. So, okay. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um, so that sounds important. And I, I did notice on Instagram, people are talking about the parade of planets where, this is what they said, Mercury, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune align. And I like to point these things out because I don't think people on social media necessarily know exactly what that means. And they assume it's going to be something like really big. And maybe it is, and maybe it isn't. So what say you? Well, it's interesting because there's two things I'll address. One is the astronomy of it, Mm -hmm. which is how they're aligned visually, you Mm -hmm. know, in a line. And they are in the sky. Right. But astrologically, some of those planets are not in the signs that some of them are. Right. Because we have a stellium of planets, five planets, that are in Gemini, moving into Gemini. So if they're in different signs, they're not part of that not whole pa- no. gang of They're not part planets. of my world. Okay. Because it's the the signs themselves represent the energy of what it is in that sign. Okay. You know, when they're just lined up, it's a visual astronomical, you know, right, event. Ste- yeah, event right. or stellium. And right. so for me, it's like what signs they're in and how they're connected. So that's what means something astrologically is if they're all in if they were all in Gemini that'd be a big deal because that's a lot of Gemini well, obviously. We have 5 of the that's lower That's a lot. We have 5 right. of the lower planets, okay. you know, are so that means we have the biggest part of that is the sun and Venus cuz they're conjunct right together. Right. And um and then the new moon, you know, um, joins on the 6th. So we'll have the moon in Gemini 2 on the 6th. So that adds another one. And then we have um, uh, Mercury, uh, Venus, Jupiter. Uh, we yeah. have all these all these planets are lined together. But the significance of all of that, these planets in Gemini, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a parade and a party. Right? Yeah, <laughs> sounds like fun. Okay. Because this is Gemini energy, and it's very strong. Now Gemini opposes Sagittarius because it's the planet six months across from mm-hmm. that sign, which is what dictates what your opposition is. Is this going to be like a hard hit to Sagittarius aspected people? I just, they go together. You know, when I talk about those two twin signs, Mm -hmm. because, you know, Gemini is a twin, they have to have an opposite. Right. We all have an opposition. Right. Okay. So, you know, well, yours is Leo and mine is Aries. Right. So so we we pull it in and out, but we have the predominance early on in our life Mm -hmm. of of the sign we're actually in. Okay. And the other side is the part that challenges us, or we 
learn to accept it. <laughs> we learn to accept it. <laughs> you have to accept Leo. I have to accept us. Aries. Okay. So. All right. Well, I like cats, so that gets me a little closer to that ex- acceptance. <laughs> but but understanding that is, um, but that there's four twin signs that mm-hmm. are true twins, and that is Gemini and Sagittarius and Virgo and Pisces. And it's funny because if you think about it, a lot of Sagittarius and a lot of Geminis, as you pointed out, have a twin. Yes. Like actually, biologically and, have and a twin. And Pisces and Virgos. Yes. Wow. So like my partner has, uh, was born of an identical twin. Right. He was, you know, massive Pisces. Well, and Sophia's friend, Ashley, she's a Sag and she has a twin. So like yeah. those, are, those are signs to look for that in. Um, so with five planets in Gemini, what does that say to us? Like, what does that mean? How would social. we interpret it? It's social. social. It's very, party, it's party. a real, but yes, it is. And this is, <laughs> especially with the sun and Venus there for a couple of weeks, uh, three weeks actually. And then, and then it will move into cancer, which I'll talk about those two. We have to understand that Venus and the sun are having a nice little dance this summer. And, uh, <laughs> part of it's just like, we're going to talk about social life and friends and, and gatherings. Then we'll talk about family mm-hmm. get-togethers and things like that as we get into July, late June and July. Well, Father's Day in mm-hmm. America coming up here in June, so yeah. that'll be a big gathering, I'm sure. Of course. And yes, the Fourth of July, of course. And but but you know everyone's talking, everyone has an opinion, everyone's going out and doing stuff and engaging in conversation. I highly recommend that you do. And it's what's fun to use the energy is to create social gatherings. Yeah. You know, get out of the house. Um, and call your friends, start a book club, uh, go to the movies, <laughs> you know, um, plan get togethers. And, uh, it's, it's a really fun time and a light airy time. You know, we've had so much intensity in the last six months Yes. and, um, this conjunction along with a few other things create this sort of, um, starting a new cycle, getting out of the last six months been very heavy yes. and, and very, um, harsh. And so we were lightening up, right? Essentially, for, are we? Doesn't feel like it. Well, the, so. the thing is, we need to. <laughs> we do need to. We, yeah, we need to get out of the depth of things and into, you know, all this fighting and yes. uh, arguing and things. Yes. And so, you know, get together with friends that you're not going to fight with, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and keep your conversations light. Gemini right. is a light, airy energy, right? And so, you know, this is about, you know talking about the movie you just went to and, and reading reviews of books and things like that. So engage um, in life yes. instead of everything outside of us. That's the noise that, yes. that we have to, that it's we're a, subjected to. Well, it's a heavy year. It and, is a heavy and year. And this is a time we can take sort of a breather. Is that because it's an eight year or is it everything involved? It's the eight year of the transformation, but also everything going on. Cause you said Pluto bounced back into Capricorn not for part of the summer. No, no, not till September. It. Oh, not till September. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I thought it did in the summer. Yeah, okay. no. So in September. Yeah. Okay, and then it's, and it's brief. It's very brief. It's very brief. Yeah. Okay, because I wish it would just stay in Aquarius already as I go back into the well, sign. Actually, we waited fifteen years. Actually, I'm wrong. It does. It, it does go retro. Um, let's see. Is it going retrograde? Yeah, Neptune and Saturn go retrograde. That's a little later. I'll, I wrote okay. that down. Okay. Um, but but Pluto stays in Aquarius for most until we get to the fall. You know, okay. so and then it goes back out after the election, all the things that are happening at that time. So, I just I want I wanted to stay in Aquarius and I want Capricorn to go away. I've just I know I'm not the only person that's had enough of Capricorn. Well, it's uh, been exhausting. Yeah, yeah. it has. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but I you know, when we look at Pluto and Aquarius and which is an air sign, I'd like to address the fact that this wonderful stellium in Gemini is making a beautiful aspect to Pluto and Aquarius right now. And I will tell you that Mercury um, and Jupiter join the party when they come together, making a beautiful aspect. So this is going to open up a lot of new information. This is something we're going to look forward to because um, it's such a favorable aspect. So everything science, technology, progressive topics, this is going to be the thing we're going to get in the news. We're going to hear about discoveries or new things. And it's so interesting. You know, a couple of times I've talked about this year because of the uh, North and South node and Aries and Libra, how we're having sort of a war year and Mm -hmm. conflicts and things. Yes. So it's kind of like reliving 68 and 69 Uh because that was going on at that time. We're having the social revolutions and everything else. Well, the thing we had in that time too was um, all the scientific discoveries and space travel and moon in the moon. 
believe it or not, in July, there is a movie premiering. I, saw, I laughed because I saw the uh, trailer for it. And it's a movie called Fly Me to the Moon. And it's a resurrection of the moon landing <laughs> really? from 1969. Wow. And, the, okay. and, and that landing was in July 20th, 1969. Okay. And so the movie's coming out around that time. I just thought that was amazingly <laughs> synchronistic and symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see if people are feeling their space um, itch needing to be scratched or not. <laughs> well, it's, it's again, study new ideas. Try think new things. When we talk about Sagittarian like you did. Yeah. Um, I, I, maybe people plan trips that they go to where they've never been before. Uh-huh. Kind of an idea I'd like to, you know, seed into everybody. It's like, don't go to the same place. Try something new. Be adventurous. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think July is going to be a little heavier, so we can just have a little more fun in June. Yeah, that'd be, <laughs> yeah. Let's take a June off for our peace of mind yeah. and enjoyment. Does yeah. it bring opportunity with all of those planets in Gemini? Because one of them is Jupiter, and I know that could be expansion. Yes, but Mercury and Jupiter together is networking. Oh. Yes. Okay. And so I you know, wrote down networking and um, business connections and uh, looking for jobs, changing jobs, uh, you know, it, you know, and then dating. This is a great time to date when the sun and Venus are together okay. in Gemini because that's that's when they have these um, dating games, you know, where yeah. they, they get together and they have these fast dates and things like that if they're still doing it. So we have three daughters. I'm getting exhausted by the whole idea of dating right now because I hear all the tea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you have a 24-year-old daughter, so. <laughs> I know. Well, and the Aurora being on tour and playing in a country band, she's um, getting an eye full of all the cowboys. She's like, oh, they're so big and so good looking and they're so polite. I'm like, yeah, enjoy that, honey. <laughs> um, what is the strawberry full moon that's happening in the month of June this month? Um, Native Americans believe that strawberry season June 1st through December 31st is full of abundance, fertility, romance, love, spirituality, falling in love, and wealth. Does that align with astrology, or is that more of a belief system of the people? It, it applies to this period we're talking about, because if we've got the sun and Venus together, that's romance, that's okay. dating. And okay. and uh, we have on the ninth of this month, Mars moves into Taurus. So that gets things a little heated up. Does it? <laughs> yeah. So what will Mars and that's, Taurus well, that's do? Ro- that's people Venus working rules, at home? Venus rules Mars. Okay. I mean, m- rules, excuse me. Venus rules Taurus. Okay. And Libra. Right. So Mars comes into that sign, so it pricks up more of the romance, more sensual. Oh, okay. More sexual. Okay. And, um, you know, and, and brings up, you know, romance and, and it's a money issue too. So you'll see money issues around that time. And we get into the, this later of this week and then the beginning of next, just some more, because we've seen the money in our system kind of go up and down quite a bit. Yes. This may settle it down. Okay. And, uh, and then it's also very artistic. Mars and Taurus is very artistic. The only negative part of that energy is it creates stubborn resistance mm, okay because <laughs> taurus is a fixed sign yes so you know if if somebody says you know i want to do this and go well i don't want to do that well i'm not i'm not moving from this place this is how i want things so i'll know. watch myself on yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is it's really um when we put uh, everything you said about the strawberry moon, mm-hmm. you know, it, and it, I love strawberry season anyway. Uh-huh. And, uh huh. Don't we all? It's just it's sweet. <laughs> yes. And uh, it, it it you know we think of the salads, we think of all the things. Even like, in Earth Magic, strawberries and are considered one of the elements. Uh, you know, one of the uh, herbs or properties, fruits that you can infuse into potions for love potions. Right. So that goes right along with. It's interesting. There's a lot of different ways to approach spirituality. And when you look at them under a microscope, they almost always align with yes. that. Well, most everything that I notice in my world, mm-hmm. uh, when I see articles or I get news or whatever, I go, yeah, that's what I've been looking at right. astrologic- uh, ugh, astrologically. <laughs> so to me, when I get the energy that we have right now in June, I think it's nice to take advantage of it because mm-hmm. that's what I like to do in my work is tell people this is a good time to do this. Right. And it's like my favorite thing to do is when I'm doing readings mm-hmm. and I ask, say I have a wife and I said, what's your husband's sign or your children's sign? 
And then I explain what's in their house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so right. I go, this is what's in your house. You know, have a Taurus son. Uh-huh. You know, you don't he leave his things alone. Don't let him. Don't let other people play with his right. toys. He's, he's possessive. The, yeah, yes, Hands exactly. off. Smack, smack. Yes, and he's off by himself, and he's not. You know, that's how they are. Just put a plate of food in his room and close the door. Exactly. <laughs> All good. So, uh, understanding the energy and uh, helping people understand that the energy is always playing around us. To know what it is is to know how to respond to it, not right. react from it. Right. You know, because it's not about you all the time. Mm -hmm. It's just the way the person is. And you said Mars is in Aries right now? It's coming to its close. I'm seeing it all over the road. Yeah. Except the really slow people. And then I'm like, you have no Aries. Were you out today? (laughs) Yes. Okay, because the moon and Mars are together right now. I (laughs) know, I know. And and I love my Aries. I love that they're innovative and they're good business owners. And they, you know, they're athletic usually. If you're not, you need to be. Um, I mean, they have some wonderful aspects to them being a young sign, but honestly, very self-serving. And I saw that on the road. Like yeah. people were just in their own head, in their own world, and didn't care about anybody around them. So I don't really enjoy Aries aspects on the road. Well, that's not going to help with Mars and Taurus either, because that's <sighs> a very it's a very slow energy. Yeah. So people slow down. Oh. And then I would drive you nuts. I'm staying home. And <laughs> and it's it can be a very selfish and stubborn right. energy. Yeah. Especially it's mine. It's mine. Especially when it comes to money. Right. So this is like, you know, all of a sudden if no. you're if you're like a someone who likes to spend money and your your partner says, We're not spending that money. Right. That's when you don't have that argument. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not a good time to negotiate, is it? It, it? it is It is until we get to the 9th and then Mars and Taurus. The 9th of... Is, actually, this, the, the 9th of June? June, yeah. So negotiating is going to go on for a while, and I want people to do that. And so if they're looking for jobs or, or they're negotiating contracts, uh-huh. Mars and Taurus is the time to do that. So this month has... That all of that attached to it, and and we go into Mars and Taurus on the eighth. On the ninth. On the ninth. Yeah. Okay. So negotiate after the ninth. Yeah. Great. So that's when the money issues will come in. Yes. Um. You know, and even on your dates, who's paying? <laughs> <laughs> I call that a last date. <laughs> 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 oh that's hilarious unless you really don't want to see him again and then pick that check up girl you picked that check up yes power play <laughs> yes on the 17th mercury and venus um are going to be conjunct in cancer and and not soon after that on the 20th um is the sun moves into cancer so now we have this little stellium on the 20th on the 20th of june oh wow yeah so but on the 17th mercury and venus get into cancer first, jun- sun joins them. And uh, this is kind of a different energy, you know, so we're getting out of the, you know, sort of stimulus of, of Gemini mm-hmm. and um, into sort of what we call receptive energy because it's cancer. So this is when you start taking information in. Where you feel everything. You feel everything, yes. You get sentimental and emotional and crazy. <laughs> well, you know, obviously cancer is security and family and money issues. You miss your children. You miss your mom. Right. So if you have Mercury and Venus in right. the sun and cancer, mm. family issues will crop up. So the conversation moves now into family. Really? Yeah. Do and we all have to talk about family issues or just some people? Do a lot of people take vacation with family? During the summer? That's true. A lot yes. of people do. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, it's a good time to get together with family if you get along. Okay. What if it's like for an Aquarius uh, or somebody with Aquarius in their chart? Because I consider you family. I consider certain friends my family. Does that count? That counts. Okay. It doesn't have to be literally be family. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, good. I, and I, moving into a cancer energy anyway, it, it brings money issues up. Right. You know, and then with Mars and Taurus during this time, money issues come up. So you might want to be a little more frugal. Okay. Um, penurious, essentially, where, you know, it's not being cheap. It's just like, watch your money. Be uh, aware of your finances, mm-hmm. what's yeah. coming in and what's going out. Okay. It's also a very dependent sign. So if you have codependent relationships with, you know, a parent or a child or someone in your family that's living off of you mm. or you're living off them and you went out, you feel like I can't, I'm stuck, I'm dependent financially. You might want to address these issues because those are tough issues for a lot of people that have strong cancer because, you know, they feel obligated 
Um, or they, but a lot of times they're enabling the dependency. They are enabling. Yes. You know, so you know. I've been doing a lot of those readings as of late, mm -hmm. like the last couple of months of people who had somebody move in with them and they, and they say, I don't know when my cousin's going to move out. I'm like, when did she move in? And the answer was like 2016. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, why is she still there? Yeah. You know, you have to bet borders, boundaries, come right. up with a move out date. Yes. You're her end game. You become the end game for those people that just sort of just sit in the corner and wait for you to throw them out or to say nothing at all. I mean, it's, I think a lot of people, it's in their karma to find their power and to say, I want my own space. You got to go. Well, I had one this week too, myself. Yeah. And, and uh, she had a 28 year old son still living with her. He's a Gemini. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I go, is mm -hmm. he educated? You know, first yes. thing. And it goes, he just hasn't decided. I go, he's coming into a Saturn return. He needs to, he needs to get out. Yeah. I had a 28 year old son reading this week as That's well. Funny. And um, he's at home. He's a Pisces yeah. and um, he has no plan on ever moving out. And she actually had a financial plan for when she dies so that he's taken care of. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, uh, people that have uh, the planet Pluto in the Scorpio house or the cancer house, really have those issues anyway. They're going to die on the hill. Well, they don't not have to, but they're the ones that get rejected or have rejection issues around money and security. So you so. mean as the mothers that are keeping their sons at home that feel, mm. I think they're afraid of being alone. That's part and, of it. And the sons become sort of a surrogate for the husbands that no longer give any fulfillment on yeah. an emotional level or maybe physical. That so, does happen. I see right? that in, in families, but yeah. It's more financial when I look at it mm -hmm. because you can't enable somebody to be dependent financially if they're a grown man or woman. But they don't see it that way. They're mothers. They see I them know. as children still. So it's about getting them to see them for who they are and that they are capable yeah. adults. Well, you're, you and I say both that once your kids get into like 20 years old, yeah. they're kind of on their own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like if, if they need to come back briefly and get their stuff together and then go back out, that's cool as long as they're working. Well, the issue is borders and boundaries. Right. Because if you want to help your kids all right. the time. Of course. So look, here's, here's the border and boundary. I'm going to give you this much money. Right. And then after that, that's where it stops. Oh, we don't have to give them money. They're so self-sufficient well, there. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm just talking about if they're going to college and oh, they're gotcha, starting gotcha, that. Oh, gotcha, sure. You know, this is where we go. Right. And then after that, you've got to start figuring out. Yeah, what happened out? to our generation? It's the <laughs> 1830 rule. When you're 18, you have 30 days to get out of something like that. It's like, the, where'd that go? That's gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then we're, the 21st, we'll have a full moon. Okay. And that will be a Capricorn full moon. And Ooh, 21st is a full moon in Cap. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is a good energy as far as getting responsible and taking charge. This is when you kick the kid out of the house. Right, <laughs> right, yeah. This is the border boundaries get clear right now. Okay, okay, that's good then. So yes. the full moon in Capricorn is to make borders and boundaries yes. clear to people, especially in financial or structures. Absolutely. Um, okay. It's about managing and organizing everything in your home and your family. And uh, okay. if you're planning a family party and things like that, um, you know, that's, a, that's that energy. I mean, it's clear thinking, it's, it's decision-making um, and it's going to oppose the sun, Mercury and Venus and cancer. So that's where it gets really tense. Sun, Mercury and, and Venus. Venus. So that little stellium I just talked about, you know, we're going to get a full moon in, in an opposition to it. Can that be, cause I, I mean, or, and I'm just asking generally that could be our nation, is a cancer aspect. Yes. So would that be a pushback against us from possibly another country at Easily. that time? Easily. Okay. Okay. Because we are a cancer nation. Right. Yeah. Okay. I try to put this on a more personal. Yeah. Well, and I appreciate that. I'm just, it occurred to me and on a general level, I just was curious. Um, and then question, um, Leo, do we go in the sun and Leo July 20th? The sun in Leo goes in... Because um, it goes into cancer the 20th. on the 20th. Yeah, yeah, so 20 yeah. to 20. 20, 20 yeah. 2021. 19, 20, 20, somewhere in there. Okay, because it fluctuates from year to year. And I think that's where people get confused because your birthday can change depending on what year and yeah. what, 
where yeah. you were born. Right. So, okay. I'm just trying to be mentally prepared because I already feel it coming. <laughs> <laughs> I start planning like two months in advance. I'll to get to that. Buffer myself and Leo. <laughs> there is something that I have warned you on this page. Oh, so, great. yeah. Great. Um, but also in the Capricorn full moon, it is family conflicts about resistance, about, you Inheritance. know. Inheritance. Well, <laughs> it's, it's like don't vacillate, in other words. Okay. Create clear rules and regulations about how you're setting things up. Okay. And that would be in your own life and in terms of how you create a schedule for yourself. This is for Pisces out there <laughs> <laughs> and <Hello>. Geminis. <laughs> Pisces, yeah. Geminis. To, you know, keep, get yourself on a schedule, a yes. routine, uh -huh. something you can manage. Because especially a lot of women I do readings for in charts, they're, you know, all over the place. You're taking care of everything and everyone all the time. That's yes. what women do. So right. you have to, this is a good time to say, stop, breathe, organize. I'm taking a girl's weekend and going to a resort. Yeah. yeah. Something like that, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Well, not no, you can plan it, but don't take the whole family. You <laughs> no, know. leave them at home <laughs> for sure. So the other thing I want to address is Neptune and Saturn on July 3rd. Mm. Uh, it's going to turn retrograde. Now we've talked about Saturn and Neptune before. It's, it's kind of heavy energy. And in Pisces, and it's it's going to go into um, they retrograde on July third. Yes. Okay. So and and again on July fourth, we're going to talk about another aspect that's important. But that that itself means it's a time of spiritual introspection, if you will. You know, your 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 sort of values, your beliefs, um, your your purpose in life. Mm. Are you, have you been doing it? You know, are you doing what you want? Are you doing what people think you should be doing and you're not living in your true self? Okay. And the retrograde takes us into that space. What are our spiritual values? You see, not our material values, but our spiritual and, you know, what we value in terms of what we're here to give, not get, um, right. essentially. And so you need to have trust and faith in self because this could be a very depressing energy because it makes you withdraw. Yeah. And okay. people could get very alone or lonely in this. Even suicidal. You'll see yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, but, you know, it's, it's like you, you're going to feel like you're detaching from things. After all this activity we've been talking about, when we get into July, it starts to change the energy. Okay. We're moving out of stelliums, by the way. We've had six months of stelliums in Aries and Taurus, now Gemini. You know, we're moving out of this concentration, if you will. So in a nutshell, what does a stellium do it's a bunch of planets in the same sign mm -hmm. at the same time so it just really enhances, it enhances. that energy yeah. and makes it so we can't ignore it exactly. like it doesn't get lost in the mix it's obvious yes okay i mean the aries one come on i mean <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a brief in may a brief taurus one you know but it, yeah but seeing it seemed to be heavy that month and mm -hmm. um I, I thought it wasn't going to be but it did and yeah. i did see a lot of financial fluctuations you know, the stock market would go up 600 points and then down 600. I mean, it was weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, essentially it's, uh, you know, it, it does over calculate the energy of when you have so many planets in, the, in one sign. I think we're going to see a lot of movement around the housing industry this summer because already here um, houses are starting to drop some of them by like 25%. Yeah, it would it would be nice to have the economy breathe a little bit and, you know, s loosen yeah. up. I'd like for the millennials and Gen Z to be able to buy some properties because I think they got the shaft. So that would be nice. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but on um, July 4th, <laughs> Mercury's going to oppose Pluto and Mercury's going to be in Leo opposing Pluto. Change it. It's my daughter's birthday. I Tom, know. Tom, fix I it. You know people. Go Sorry. Talk to them. July 4th. It's supposed to be happy. Mm -hmm. So you think we're something bad's going to happen on July 4th? It's not. <laughs> okay, Mercury and Leo is somebody with strong points of view. Okay. Pluto is a resistance to everything as you have an opposition to it. So this is where someone's going to force their opinion on you. Ah. And you're going to say, I'm not going to do what you're telling me to do. It's, it's a struggle in terms of one doing something contrary to what somebody else wants. And either you're going to force your opinion on someone or they're going to force it on you because it's in Leo and Leo is very subjective. So Mercury and subjective is my point of view. And, um, and it's also, it can be very childlike too, by the way, but it's essentially, this is how I subjectively feel about this. And, and with there's an opposition, you're, you're going to get in conflict with somebody who is going to oppose it. 
because oppositions mean uh, uh, exactly that. I just want to drink and eat hot dogs and put my flag out <laughs> on, four, on the fourth. I'll be here. I'm sure you yeah. will too. Well, no, it, it doesn't have to say everything's going to go. It doesn't have to be bad. It's just that if you're in a party situation in the 4th of July, uh, watch getting in conversations. Irish goodbye it. Yeah. Irish goodbye it. A nice slip out of the back door. Never now, heard I have anyone. done that my whole life. <laughs> I know. I am a totally Irish goodbye. <laughs> So, and, 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 and again, that's, you know, if you feel tension, Irish could buy it. Yeah. Seriously. I I'll bring a dish to that kind of party. <clears throat> and if I Irish could buy it because I, it gets tense or I don't feel like talking about something and people won't let it go. Mm-hmm. Irish could buy it. And I feel like I've left them sort of an offering in what I made. Yeah. And I'm like, you're welcome. No, I, I <laughs> get a lot of clear a lot of, cri- a lot of criticism when I do what I do. My partner's like, why, Tom, you have to say goodbye. I'm okay, like, but he'll never leave. No, so I know. You guys are like the opposite. Exactly. <laughs> 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 the reason I'm bringing up uh, the, these planet oppositions and things that I do, because, you know, aside from having all this Gemini energy and everything that we're going on, because Pluto's always at the center of this, mm-hmm. because Pluto is things that transforms everything. So when we have that beautiful stellium making a beautiful aspect of Pluto in an air sign, Mm -hmm. that's a great energy. But then when you get Mercury moving into Leo, which opposes Aquarius, now we have, you know, the conflict of conversation becomes enhanced. Do we have enough of that already? You know, so let's try not to do that. Let's not put us in a position. And since, since it is in July watch the arguments with the family because there are a lot of family members that have different points of view and it's not going to help to just sit there and try and force your opinion on someone because no one's going to change their mind. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Everybody's already picked their team. No, I get it. So So July is going to be a little rough, it sounds like, emotionally. Well, I'll go to the middle and stop. It sounds like an emotional taffy pull, you know? (laughs) Kind of. <laughs> July July uh, 12th, I'm going to stop there because that's when Venus moves into Leo and opposes Pluto. And that's going to be conflicts in relationships, trying to control, possess oh. someone. Um, it can create sudden endings easily because when you have a, if you're in a relationship that is not working, a great chance to say, this isn't working, I'm out. Okay. And um, because when we put Pluto that's and Venus to together, know. you can start one or you can end one. Right. And so it's an opposition. So it seems to me that, you know, someone tried to possess you, uh-huh. and control you. Right. Look out for that. Yeah. And if you're trying to possess and control somebody else, right. they're going to leave you wow. if that's their nature. Okay. But that could be good. Maybe they don't belong together. Maybe it's time for it to end and you move on and find happiness. But then also Mars and Uranus will be conjunct and in Taurus. And this is violence. Oh, God. <laughs> Explosive. Sudden loss and accidents and tempers. So and that is a very, very volatile time of the month. It's the middle of the month. Middle middle of July. Middle of July. Yes, very Damn much it. so. Okay. Mid-July. So this is watch watch the accidents. Um, wow. You know, watch somebody gets violent with you because you won't do what they want. Right. So, I mean, it doesn't mean all this is going to happen all over the place. It's just... I don't know. Like, we pay attention to that, and I'll see a blip or, an, uh, you know, a surge in um, getting more people that I'm bringing through tied to a crime. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll see that. So we're actually a good barometer of what's going on in the world. And well, timing. you know, um, around the world, this could create more violence. Right. And so there could be a disruption. One of the things I did want to say about... Uh, the Gemini energy of Venus and, and the sun in, in Gemini right now is, is Venus rules the south node and Libra that we're going through mm-hmm. with Aries as the north. It's a time to try to negotiate. It's a great time to negotiate, you know, with Israel and Palestine and all right. that kind of stuff, which it's just, this would be a great energy if we could Wouldn't get that, that done. That would be so nice. Because we're trying to get the hostages back. We're trying to find peace along yes. with war. You yes. know, there's another side here. Right. So I, I, this is a great time if we can, you know, do that in our own lives with people. So if you're in a conflict, can you negotiate it? Right. You know, can you, can you work it out? If not, when you get to July, it's going to end. <laughs> right. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. though. So try and work it out now, but you may find that it's not able to work out right. and it just ends. It comes to an end. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fortunately, I don't have anything as far as I know will report back that I could put in that basket, but some people will. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
No, let's, we'll stop in the middle of summer and then we'll pick up next time. Oh my gosh. I want to overwhelm. I'm so excited, but so nervous. So I'm really going to enjoy June then. So I think my friend Catherine and I might be a little psychic because her husband, Doug, whom I love, he's, I get along with Leo males. Mm-hmm. It's the women that I can't usually like friendship level. I can get right. along with them, but they don't become friends. Um, his his birthday is the end of July. Mm-hmm. She moved his birthday party to like June twenty first or twenty second, oh, somewhere fair. in there. So it's early, and I must feel like intuitively mm-hmm. that was a good idea because yeah. July is going to be kind of tough. Yeah, and in June, that's a gr- that'll be a great social time for his birthday. Yes. So I'm going to let her know. That's interesting. Also, because of the um, first week and a half of this month. Um, and you mentioned Sagittarius to Gemini. Yeah. Travel. Because Sagittarius is travel. Yeah. You know, it's also hiking, um, get a dog. Right. <laughs> you know. uh, you, you're a moon in Sag. And so you're you're actually um, a good litmus test for Gemini for me. I watch all of my friends that have mm. Sag in their charts. But the sun in Sages that I know always go dark in Gemini. Yeah. Like they get depressed. They feel... Um, alone or um, well they go off alone yeah they don't I, I get the sense that they just want to be alone yeah because the sag nature just wants to be out in nature and away from people a lot of times the ones i see feel misunderstood and they don't know why they feel dark so i'm just saying that for the sagittarius um out there that are going through gemini if you feel more anxiety or things aren't working out for you or people don't appreciate you, that's very typical Mm -hmm. in an opposition. So everybody goes through an opposition four weeks out of the year with the sun opposing their sun. So I just want them to know it's not their karma. It's not that they did anything bad. You're not drawing it to you. The universe isn't punishing you. This is what causes you to be introspective so that you transform in that opposition and learn something about what you want in direction. Well, that's good advice because, you know, when we talk about Sagittarius anyway, as a freedom loving soul, Mm -hmm. you know, it gets around people too much. It wants to, it's an Irish goodbye again. (laughs) (laughs) Because I'm a moon and Sag and that's why I'm an Irish goodbye. Right. That's so funny. (laughs) I emotionally detach. I'm like out by. (laughs) We, We were talking about this today, Joe and I, Gemini's and Sag is at least 30 or not 30, 50% of our friends yeah. are, are Sagittarius or Gemini. Yeah. Like the people we spend time with. The other ones are Libra. Yeah. <laughs> like Libra. And I got both of those. Yeah. Yes. So it's interesting how we draw in certain energies in our life. You draw in like all energies though. You draw yeah, in people of all. That's not my game at all. <laughs> energy wise. Like I'm the, I know what's up and I, I, I like to keep it light in the friend area. <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean? for me, I mean, I I don't have as many friends now that I used to. I'm le- much less social, uh, and that's by design. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm someone who loves to observe. That's how my nature is and how I learn is to observe people yeah. and learn from it because I'm not interested in me. I'm interested in other people. So Are all Li- Libras observers? Or well, the air signs you? in nature tend to be more observant. We do, don't we? Yeah. We sigh we size people up. Yes. We check them out. Yes. We're like, what's up? We're gauging their energy. Well, we're, we're social creatures yeah. and communication. But for right. me, you know, I um, the Scorpio I have in my chart wants to know more about people. I'm not like talking to everybody at a party. I'm right. off in the corner just drilling someone for information. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about their life. I want to know about... The, yes. the interesting parts. I like talking about other people's lives, not mine. Yeah, and that's they, my point. But yeah. they always want to talk about my life. Yeah. And I'm very hesitant to tell people what I do for that reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't like going to parties and telling people I'm an astrologer because they won't leave me alone. No, but somebody <laughs> always blurts it out. Or I goes, know. Oh, my God. Do you know who my friend is? It's <laughs> like, if you want to be a friend, stop doing that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's why we keep such few friends, I think, too. Well, and I say this in a lot of my readings as advice to people. I said, yeah. I've learned to be in control of my environment by yes. reading the room. Yes. So I can decide who and how I want to respond to something, how yeah. I want it to be, not yeah. how... I just react to it and feel like I must say something or give them information or please them in some way like the Libra I used to be. Is it a fixed energy um, characteristic to control our environment in who can come around us 
like who will allow in our space or is that just me? Uh, I would say it's just more just you. I don't think people okay. are self, that self-aware, to be honest with okay. you. Okay, <laughs> because I am I pick up on people's energy, so I have to have certain people, that mm-hmm. kind of energy around me. Yeah. And if somebody shows up that I don't know, like somebody shows up at my birthday party and brings a stranger as a right. guest, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing yeah, that, my that, birthday? You that, know? That's your fixed nature. Right? Okay, that's yes. fixed nature. Absolutely, because you have extraordinarily high bores and boundaries. Yes. Well, because I would never do that. You know, these are things I would never do. So when somebody does it to me, I'm like, "Mm." but but you're rare. Okay. Well, maybe that's a good thing. (laughs) I say it every time we do a reading or do a podcast with you because I'm like, I'm not that person. I'm just not that person. Yeah, but you you are rare because most people, A, aren't aware of their environment. I'm acutely aware. You're acutely aware. Yeah. I tend to engage more than you do, or, or like you said, I'm not as discriminating. Right. You know, I'm just more interested and curious. Sure. So you enjoy the socializing a little bit more than I, I know that all air signs are social creatures. I find Aquarius to be the least Mm. social of the air signs. Gemini, I see it. I see it in Libra. I've known a lot of Aquarians and they like to be out, but they want people to see them having a good time, not actually interacting with a bunch of people or um, off in the corner observing what's going on. Um, but not mm, intermingling. No, that's that's an Aquarius <laughs> off in their world. Yeah, you know they want they they belong for a little while, then go. Yeah, I'm done. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Irish goodbye. And see, I <laughs> Here we go I, that. I gotta just practice that more often. I, but the friend that I had that did that the most was John Jay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, He's the king of Irish goodbyes. Yeah. And no matter where we went, I'm like, where the hell did you go? You were there like. 30 minutes. He's like, yeah, yeah, I had to go. But isn't he a Gemini? He's a Virgo. Oh, he's a Virgo. Okay. Um, but without fail, every yeah. wedding, every social event, yeah. Irish goodbye. Yeah. So um, I shouldn't feel so bad about it then. I, I well, he, for a living, he's a radio host. He's on all the time. Right. You know, he's a disc jockey. So it's like he talks all day and then it's like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. So, yeah. Yeah. Because to him, it's work. I guess. I like just between you, me, and the wall. <laughs> and whoever's lost, listening to us he, right now. He lost a ton of weight like yeah. 15 years ago. And I kind of like chubby John Jay. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> he was more sexual. <laughs> he shared food. He was yeah. just fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's just my feeling. More relaxed, yeah. Definitely more yeah. relaxed. Definitely yeah. um, more uh, social. Right. Okay. So, Okay. Well, thank you. You're I can't wait for you to come back in <laughs> in July. Maybe I'll have you in mid July when everything's hitting the fan so we can talk about that. Yeah. That would be interesting if you're around because it's summer. I love summer. People leave Arizona. I'm like, it's over 90. Bye. Mid July, we'll be together. Right. Okay, good. <laughs> well, thank you for opening our eyes to what we need to look for this summer. It actually sounds like. We're going to be coasting through June, mm-hmm. and then we hit July, and it's going to be a little bumpy yeah. and a little violent. So we'll yeah. watch out for that. I'm sure the news cycle as we get towards Leo Sun yeah. will also heat up yeah. as well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my breaks where I can get them. So thank you to my listeners for tuning in. You can catch me next Tuesday for a fresh episode of The Dead Life. I'm Allison Dubois. This is The Dead Life, and to all of my believers out there. Don't stop believing.